Okay, so I'm gonna reveal some of my art secrets today, but instead of doing it alone, we've got a special guest appearance. Hey everyone, I'm Ergo Josh, and I love juicy butt. You can get a really nice feel. You can feel her butt. It's just so juicy and appealing. Feels so real and solid. It just feels juicy. I love juicy butt. So Josh, AKA Ergo Josh, actually gave me a call the other day and said that he was doing a study or breakdown of my style. And he was actually making a piece based on some of the things that he observed in my style. So he wanted some of my feedback on his work and we figured, hey, we might as well turn this into a collab. So here we are. Josh sent me a video that he put together where he talks about some of the things that he sees in my style. And I think it'd be kind of fun to go through it, talk about some of the things that he mentions, maybe give you guys some tips and pointers on some of the things that I like to do in my work. And at at the end we could do a bit of a critique slash paint over of josh's piece that he did based on my style should be a fun video oh my god shot hey everyone i'm ergo josh and this right here is sam does arts i'm not gonna lie i'm a little bit nervous that josh is gonna find like some some very hidden buried secrets in my work that uh i'm not ready for the world to see yet you know like the, the uh, soul sacrificing and uh, demonic rituals that i do but we'll let it play. The first thing is that it's very clear. It's sharp, it's clean. You know exactly what he's trying to show. The second thing is that he's basically a master at stylization. Most people like me just stylize, but he also stylizes the lighting. He doesn't paint the lighting exactly as the reference is. The lighting isn't nearly the same. It's close, it has the same general feel, but a lot of times it can be very, very different. Okay, so Josh makes a really good point about the stylization of the lighting. So you guys know that I like to stylize my characters. They have specific proportions that I like to give them. On top of that, I also like to uh, play around with the way the lighting behaves on the characters. I love a strong light source. I love really powerful lighting, really high contrast lighting. And a lot of times when I see lighting in a reference photo, I would like to push that even further. Sometimes a photo might be really muted, but I I like to ramp it up to make that lighting even more dramatic. I like to add a little bit more contrast, a little bit more vibrancy, a little bit more saturation, just to you know give my pieces a little bit more drama. But yeah, that's a really good observation. So stylization, not only in terms of the proportions and the drawing of the character, but also in terms of the rendering when it comes to lighting. Stylize the form and the lighting, but he also stylizes the color. In the color of all of these, it's way, way more interesting than the reference itself. Again, I think this is very important. You need to look at his reference in order to really understand what he's doing because it's easy to just get caught up in the beauty of everything when you're looking at the artwork alone. Now, when I'm painting my pieces, when I'm doing my work, I usually don't even think about these things. Uh, they kind of just happen. So it's always nice to get an outside perspective on the way that I do things. And I think with the uh, exaggerated proportions that I like to do, sometimes it overshadows the things that I do with color. So if you look on the screen here, you can see a specific example where Josh talks about how the reference is cooler and different uh, from the piece that I actually ended up making. And you know, the one that I created has a lot more contrast in terms of the warms and the cools. So if you have like a blue background, and you put a subject in front of it that is like, let's say teal, it's not gonna stand out as much as a subject that is orange. And these things aren't anything revolutionary, they're just color theory basics. But if you start implementing these things into your paintings, eventually they do add up and they do make your paintings a lot more effective. What I really love about his stuff is that he leaves the sketch in because I love to sketch really wildly these days and I like the appeal that it has. Some people don't, but I think it's really, really effective and it lets you cheat and get a lot of contrast and pop to your work that you wouldn't be able to do if you limited yourself to no lines at all. And that's another really good point that Josh makes that I want to talk about, and that is leaving the sketch in my pieces. And I personally like to do that for my style. I think it's something that's kind of taken a hold now. And when you see a piece uh, that has a sketch in it that looks like that, you can kind of tell it's my piece. So now it's turned into a bit of a habit, but it's, I just like the way that it looks. You know, it adds a little bit more information. And like Josh said, you could cheat a little bit with lines. Let's say if you have a character who has a lighter complexion and you put them up against a lighter background well now that character's skin is kind of starting to blend into the background but if you add in a little bit of line work just a tiny bit instead of rendering the whole painting to make it so that the character stands out of the background using all kinds of like subtle hue shifts and all that stuff you could just use one small thin line that brings the character out it's a way to save you some time i like saving time <laughs> 
But yeah, I just wanted to quickly cover some of the points that Josh talks about in his video. If you guys want to see the full breakdown that he did, be sure to check out his video. I'll link it in the description. But with that being said, we're going to now destroy Ergo Josh's piece that he did uh, based on my style. I'm going to end this man's whole career. Okay, so I had Josh send over the PSD file. I think there are some things here that we could work on, some things that we could improve based on my personal preferences and what I like to do for my styles. Okay, so looking at this piece right now, he did this in an hour and a half, which is a really good job, Josh. So uh, you got that part of my, my work process down. And there are a couple things that he did really well. So the first thing is, you know, when I was watching the process video, which he has over on his channel, um, he did the background first. Round of applause. So doing the background first is something that I really, really like to do for all my pieces, because when I have the background, when I know that scene is gonna work, it gives me so much more confidence to go into the character and really just flesh that whole scene out. But not only that, having a background can also tell you a lot about the lighting in the overall environment. You're gonna be much more informed as to whether or not the colors that you chose for your character are correct based on what you see in the background. So that's something else that I think is really valuable. It's the power of the background to be able to tell you about the lighting on your character. I think Josh did a really good job with the lighting on the character. So if we take a look here, he's got a really good separation between the light and the shadow, right? You can tell exactly what areas are in light. We're just gonna do a light paint over. And remember guys, never paint over other people's work unless you get their expressed consent. And in this case, Josh gave me the consent to end his entire career. And that is what I'm gonna do. So based on what I see in the reference photo, the light wouldn't reach this side of the mouth so that part would be darker it would be covered up and looking at the skin tone here i think there might be a little bit too much saturation in the oranges on this area of the skin i would actually probably move it down to the reds and desaturate the shadows just a little bit and i think i'm i want to darken the shadow a little bit to create a little bit more contrast I think overall Josh did a pretty good job with the proportions, especially on the uh, torso and on the hips. But I think the shoulder, the left shoulder here is coming up a little bit too high. I think he made this as a bit of a stylistic choice. For me, I think I want to bring it down just a little bit. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to liquefy. So once I bring that shoulder down, I think I need to bring the arm down a little bit too. Otherwise it's going to look too big. It's a little bit less dynamic now, but it, I think in my opinion, uh, it looks a little bit more believable and I like to go for believability in my style. Now, something else that I want to talk about is the proportions on the face. So that's here. We've got the eyebrows, we've got the eyes. I think uh, there might be a little bit of a misalignment between the two eyes. So if you look at the inner corners of the eyes, um, they're going at a little bit of a different angle than the eyebrows. You usually want to make sure that they're at the same angle so i would probably bring this eye down a little bit more and then in terms of the center line of the face i think it would go something like that and in this case uh, i would try to bring the eyebrow over just a little bit to make it match the spacing of this eyebrow and you know how we're gonna fix that we're gonna liquefy and while i'm at it i think i'm also going to expand the eyes a little bit more um, just to suit my style. Again, a lot of this is just personal preference, but since this video is basically me sharing my art secrets with you guys, I think you guys are here for my personal preferences. Right, so I'm making the eyes a little bit bigger. I'm bringing the left eye down so that it matches the uh, eye line. And I think the mouth could also be brought up a little bit because if you look at the spacing between the bottom of the nose and the top of the lip, Usually this area is uh, quite a bit smaller than the spacing between the bottom lip and the tip of the chin. And honestly, most of these things are just personal stylization cues. Everybody has different ways of stylizing their characters. You know, you might like to make the eyes of your character like super wide like that. You might like to make the face of your character super long like that. You never know. Uh, any type of stylization is very valid, okay? But this is just me trying to show you guys how I would stylize my characters. Something like that, and then we're going to liquefy the line art too so that everything matches up. 
I think I would also give a little bit more volume to the hair and when I'm painting hair, I would try to avoid this uh, kind of hard edge like that. It'd be better to break it up with like some loose strands that come out, you know, things like that. Obviously not like this, but. Okay, so I think that's pretty good, but I also now want to add a little bit more shadow to the pants. Once again, the shadow value is very saturated and I want to desaturate that just a little bit and make it a little bit darker. Right, so if you take a look at what I've done here, a lot of the things that I've done have added more contrast to the character. And this is really important for a lot of my pieces, um, especially the ones that are outdoors in sunlight, is you gotta remember sunlight is a very powerful light source. So the light and the shadow are going to be very high contrast. I think Josh, you did a really good job with the implementation of my style onto your character. Um, and this is about all I would do to change it. But now I wanna move on to the background. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna change the horizon line because in the reference photo, the horizon line is actually going in this direction. And I think it gives the composition a little bit, a bit more of a dynamic feel. And I'm gonna to try to change that here. And I've just erased the sketch lines in the background. This is because I usually don't leave my sketch lines into my backgrounds. I want things that are closer to you, things that are a little bit more important in the scene to have a little bit more clarity. And in the background, I don't want too much of that sharp, crisp sketch line kind of clarity because that sometimes takes away from the uh, subject that I'm trying to depict. And I think something else that I would actually do for the background is to, again, create a little bit more contrast. You can add some orange tones onto the trees there to make it seem like the sunlight is hitting the tree. Same thing for this tree here. I would add a little bit more contrast. Um, I can see that Josh, you tried to uh, get some of the shadows going here. But again, when there's sunlight outside, you want a lot of contrast between the light and the dark. We could add some grassy stuff. I'm just gonna go in very fast, very, very, very rough. Just get an idea of what it, what it might look like. Again, I'm just adding a lot of contrast between the lights and the darks, right? Because the sunlight is a very powerful light source. And this is all very rough, very quick. Uh, I would probably take my time with the foliage here if I was actually painting it on my own. But since this is a quick paint over to give you guys a sense of what I would do differently, you know, we're just gonna do it really, really quickly. Okay, so now if I switch the background on and off, you can kind of see uh, what I'm talking about with higher contrast, a little bit more sharper details, a little bit more confidence in the brush strokes. And if you want to have some fun, you could even add some clouds into the background, you know, just some nice, big, fluffy clouds. But yeah. You get my point. You see what I'm talking about here. Um, this was a really quick, really fast paint over. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for a paint over in our recent roast videos. So here's a bit of a paint over in collaboration with Ergo Josh. Josh, you did a really good job picking out some of the things, some of the key things that I do in my work and uh, revealing that to the entire world. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not mad, but no, seriously guys, go check out his video to make sure that you get all the points that he mentions. And a lot of these things that I talked about in this video don't just apply to Josh guys. It applies to everybody. Things like contrast, things like colors, you know, um, focusing on the background first. These are things that are going to help you guys out as well. I hope you learned something new from watching me do this critique and this paint over and, uh, talking about Josh's breakdown of my work. But with that being said, those are some of the art secrets that I wanted to reveal to you guys today. More to later thank you guys so much for being here and thank you to josh for doing this collab really cool of you 
man and after uh finishing this i want to leave you guys with a closing thought and that is even though we're talking a lot about art styles and how to break down other people's art styles there's no need to rush finding your own art style in fact style is something that's going to change from year to year from month to month maybe from week to week you know we're people we learn and we grow i'm sure a year from now my art style would look very different from what it is right now because i would have learned new things and there's no need to rush finding an art style okay just keep learning keep doing your thing and uh just find what works for you everybody works differently if you want to see more digital art content just like this feel free to subscribe to my channel but with that being said i'll see you guys on the next video but yeah, guys, make sure to check out Josh's video. He's got a lot of good information in there too. Feel free to subscribe and then head over to his channel because this video is done. So I don't know why you're still here. Why are you still here? And not only does he stylize the form and the lighting, but he also stylizes the butt.